Hi, beautiful souls. I hope you're having a fantastic day, fabulous day, wonderful day, wherever you are in this realm. Today I'm talking about the grid. I'm going to start with talking about what is defined as the grid. I don't think I've ever really spoken about it much in um, any of the videos that I've done uh, over the life of this channel. But We'll take the grid as the starting point and move on to um, some other, other things that I think you might find interesting. Now, when I first came across the grid, it was when I was in my late 20s and I had a lucid dream where I was taken to fly through the grid, to move through the grid. Kienge nambi e toyange nambi non nionge na ambe nionge ni ende non bo e niango e na. And the the grid was in how I described it back then, because I had no concept of what it was, was cubes cubes that were all connected so in fact it was grid lines and it uh it was sort of seamless and limitless it it, it didn't um have any boundaries to it anyway a few years later i did some dream gestalt work and i became the grid and i spoke as it and this is the, the concept of uh, working with your dreams. You become it and speak and learn what that represents to you within your psyche. What were you, what was the, the message you were um, attempting to uh, receive or obtain from that deeper aspect of you? So I became the grid. And for me, it felt like I was only in there for a few moments. But for the facilitator, I was uh, in that energy for about half an hour. And it was very, very old and, um, uh, again, limitless, limitless. Uh, it, it extended with no boundary. And then a few years later, the grid uh, again arose in my reality. And it was nothing, it didn't have any sort of charge to it. It wasn't positive or negative. It just was. And it was, uh, it is malleable it is at the foundation of this realm it is the foundation of all realms and we as creator beings absolutely have the ability to influence what is laid upon those foundational uh, structures that grid now the closest i can sort of uh define it is with the uh holodeck on the enterprise in star trek next generation 
And I think they do also have it on the Orval. I think the Orval has a holodeck as well. And if when it's turned off, when there is no image in there, you can actually see the squares on the wall. And those squares are actually end up being 3D, three dimensional with height, with depth, etc. When the actual program is activated. And thus, in a way, we are in that simulation. It did, on this planet, it did get out of hand somewhat. And so, yes, we were um, quarantined. But this experiment, this experience is coming to an end. I had a um, BQH session with a friend of mine, Becky Halia, and she's an, an amazing um, facilitator for this process. And actually, I'll leave her link in the uh, description below. And we spoke lots of light language backwards and forwards. And, um, and then we both spoke to uh, different dimensional aspects uh, spoke through those different dimensional aspects of each other and spoke together. And in this conversation, we were talking about the experiment and how it is coming to a close. And that all of the information that we've gathered in this realm of polarity um, is invaluable to the rest of creation. Now, what is the premise? What is the, the basis of this experiment? The basis of this experiment was to understand what it was to live without an awareness of um, God or source or the mother father principle, the truth of that um, existence, and that we were actually a fractal of that. So for a long time, the majority of humans had been uh, feeling disconnected from source, feeling disconnected from anything divine, and that they, in fact, had no divinity within them at a real knowingness level. Uh, we, we have probably, many people have been to some sort of a service or a church and read and stood up and sat down and kneeled and done all of that in uh, an attempt to find that real connection. But it won't be found in generally in traditional religions. There are aspects of traditional religions that, that um, uh, reveal this or link to this or hint of this. And there are people who have found that connection through it. But mostly all of the religions um, have are really just means of control of humanity. So when we decided to come and experience this situation of being disconnected from the truth of who we are, it was uh, a volunteer situation, absolutely. And not every being who is exists in those high frequencies and dimensions beyond the polarity chose to do it and it has been said many times that that the beings that did it were the strongest of the strong were the um uh, really well prepared for this experience but it did get carried away and part of what i discovered in the bqh session for me was my collective consciousness and I decided that it would be me that came here to, to have this experience and um, that it would happen without any support from those, from that original collective. Because we wanted, we wanted the full 100% deal of what it was to be disconnected. And not everybody makes that decision. Not every person that came in made that decision. And in fact, what, what we did was we unaligned our realm from this greater frequency. So we actually sort of cut the link. 
And what has happened recently is that link has been reconnected. And in the BQH session, the um, the oversoul of the galaxy came through me and said, yes, the experiment is now coming to a close. So the we have been reset. We have um, been in a washing machine. We have been on a, um, like a hamster wheel going over and over and over with this stuff. Uh, this stuff of, of uh, pain and, and um, competition and judgment and grief and anger, all of these uh, experiences have been, um, been recreated over and over. And it did get out of hand in that uh, some of the beings here really uh, lost it. And so what has happened is we, the experiment is now over. We have realigned with that higher frequency and that energy is coming in. That energy is being uh, incorporated into our systems. So on this level that I'm talking about, all the things that take our attention, all the things that we get um, up in arms about or, uh, have a lot of energy entwined in, in a way, ultimately are irrelevant. On one level, and the level that I'm talking about, it is all irrelevant because it belongs to the old grid work. It belongs to the old um, simulation. So if, if you are drawn to look at these things, to involve yourself, there's still something to be learned from it. What are the emotions that you feel when you look at the debate between the globe and the flat earth? What are the um, emotions that you are feeling when you think about uh, Russia and Ukraine? On the level I'm talking about, it is an illusion only there to show you the what is at the core of your system. So if you were to put plug your entire body and be able to show a graph representation of what your body was emanating, for a long time, most of that stuff we've been emanating has been related to polarity with the first three chakras and with all that competition, pain, victim, tyrant, etc. And that was necessary for this experiment. But now that we are uh, waking up and now that we are becoming aware of the truth that that uh, there's been something else happening. And what I think is with Tartaria, Flat Earth, et cetera, resets, is that it is a way to put in our face that something isn't right. It helps us think outside of the rut of perception that we've been living in for a long time, many, many lifetimes. So stuck in all of these trials and tribulations of this current realm. And even in a way, demons, jinn, uh, all of those things are irrelevant people. On this level of perception. If you are still dealing with them, if you are still there in your reality, then there is still something to learn from them for you. And be present in that learning. There is no judgment on anybody being anywhere in this uh, experiment or this, wherever you are, is absolutely perfect. But in the big picture of what we're doing here, it belongs to the old simulation, the old format of the grid. Now, we 
I understand that we, as we under, begin to understand that we are created beings, we can physically um, transmute the grid, change the grid, change what is laid upon that grid, that, that, those um, uh, foundations. And we overlay our thoughts and uh, concepts and um, what it is we want to be and live as. And the old is falling apart because more and more people are waking up and putting their focus on a different reality. And the video I did recently on um, uh, there's a door in front of you. And this is really a further explanation of what that door is. That door, through that door, is the new construct that you can choose to exist in. Um, so it is to look at this, but from the observer, look at the past, look at what is in existence right now, and see if you can actually see it from the, the viewpoint of that scientist, of the experiment that's that's been happening and that is now ready to change, is now ready to evolve and come to an end. And all of the information that we've gathered through all of those trials and tribulations around what it is to be disconnected, around what it is to feel abandoned and alone, ultimately. Um, we've, we've added that knowledge base to the library of reality and that any being, no other being is going to have to come down into this type of a, of a um, incredibly challenging experience because they will be able to live it and understand it vicariously through us. So when we look to um, the new reality, the new earth, and start to embody the frequencies of it, and that is a frequency of love, which is uh, a very healing energy for all of the stuff that we existed and went through here. When we are in love and expansion and in compassion and care, um, in uh, joy, bliss, uh, even excitement about the future, we are helping to create the new reality. Now, my understanding is the grid isn't just here. This is this version of what's on the grid, but the grid actually exists as the framework, the bones of all reality. And thus it goes back to eternity. It is not part of our prison system or our quarantine, however you want to define it or describe it. It is a way to define how we create what we want. So and what we overlay what we want through our consciousness and create. So when I'm saying there is a new grid, it is not just another version of this. It is anything we want it to be. It is um, as limitless as we want it to be. So it is, on one level, it's irrelevant what's happening in the world. It is a dissolving system. It is a dissolving um, experiment. Now, my belief is, and this is my belief, that the changes will happen around 2032. 
So I'll put my uh, put my cards on the table and say around 2032. And I have um, heard this and known this for a long time. And I understand I've heard other people talk about that date too. Now, I don't believe we're going to get reset. This will change before we get the usual reset. Um, and the, the other thing is that as a collective, we will either hold this in place or create the new one as a group. And as more and more people are waking up and standing up for themselves, choosing to be the, the, um, uh, the guiding light within their own life and not giving their power away to something outside of them and finding their own power and choosing how they want, that is going to fall apart. And this then will uh, come into reality, into formation as a group collective as well. But even on an individual basis, you can choose um, what you wish to experience. And this doesn't, isn't just one way, this new uh, reality we're stepping into. It will allow for any way that you want to be. Isto koreshti amboku uti sena, hike tu ukumbu uteshi anda kimiaka, e tu ta. Edoka ya jonga achia tsuku uti ne kombo ute asi eti sa sa ki kamba atia to shea sa ki enoria kata. So let me say again that what we're going through here right now in this old dissolving structure is still teaching us about what it is we've yet to own and learn. And Again, it's not to deny what you're feeling. It's not to um, avoid it, but it's to bravely look at it from that point of what is it I'm still learning? What is the emotion? When, when I said that we have this graph, if we connected it up and we had this um, uh, output visualized on a piece of paper, on a, on, on a graph, it is the sum of our energy that we are putting out it will it will be parts and pieces of this and that and if there is any of the issues unresolved that are related to polarity then these things will keep coming up in your reality but it's to pull out and to feel all of the emotions to understand that at the core of the emotion is energy that's a part of your energy signature that is unresolved, that is unfinished, that is incomplete in the lesson. Um, and as you get complete with it and observe it and understand it and feel it and breathe it, it's it's put to bed. It's it's actually incorporated and that part of your signature changes to show that incorporation. So as we understand this world, as we understand it further and, and allow the old systems to fall away, to not allow that those old things to define us, um, but to be limitless in the definition of who we can be in this reality, it will start the whole of humanity to move into this new one. So I'm just wondering if I've covered it all or if I've left anything out. Um, okay, I'm getting that there's enough for you to go on with in contemplating this. So have a fantastic day in this crazy realm we're in and all my love to you and keep turning and facing the new reality keep anchoring keep envis envisaging and feeling the frequency of freedom the frequency of limitlessness the power the um the joy and the bliss 
and the oneness again the true knowingness that we are divine the true knowingness that we are that fractal of god that fractal of all uh all beings all existence shiongeta site tu kambako kotaya shietaka kitana biatore and biatore ka kitchet sinzena Okay then, bye-bye. Yeah.